This is Scorpion's XT9000. It is their top tier full carbon adventure helmet. At the time of recording this, it's $550, and it is almost, almost my perfect KDB helmet. But for like some really nitpicky reasons, we'll talk about that. Okay, first review of 2024, and we're gonna do things a little different this year. I was thinking about what I use reviews for, and that is for the information to make an informed decision on a purchase, like this helmet. If you see a review on this channel and they gave it to me for free for reviewing, you'll see the card up there, it says paid promotion. That's not gonna change the way we're gonna do things. We're not gonna do like a, hey, you should buy this. I'm gonna give you the information that you guys are searching for on Google, and on my Instagram, follow me. I'm gonna ask questions when I get a new uh, device or a uh, piece of gear in for you guys to ask the questions that you want to know about these things so you can make those decisions. Regardless, they're all gonna be the same no matter if I spent my own money or somebody sent it to me for free. What you won't see is somebody giving me money to tell you what they want to tell you. I'm always gonna do this in my words. I'm not going to accept anything if they try to tell me what I can say and what I can't. But this one I bought, I bought just because I'm in the market for a new helmet. So that's, uh, that's how these reviews are gonna work. I'm going to give you a bird's eye view of the item, kind of the feature set that makes, you know, the headlines. And then we're gonna answer some questions that you guys have sent in. And I'm gonna give you uh, kind of like my favorite things about it and some things that I think need some improvement or are just plain wrong. <laughs> All right, first things first, like I said, at the RIP, uh, the XT9000, or uh, overseas, I think it's the ADF9000. They're almost the same helmet, and I'll get to that in a little bit. But it is uh, a carbon fiber helmet, full 3K carbon, uh, no compositing or anything like that. They have a quick wick, moisture wicking, antimicrobial, and super comfy. Uh, insides, this has the air fit, which is basically, think, Reebok pumps, there's bladders underneath the cheeks so you can pump them up. Titanium double D ring, a removable peak, so you can put this thing in what people kind of call Street Fighter mode. Lots of vents, lots of vents. Uh, open and closable. This one, uh, there's two vents. One is open and closable right here in the front. The other is uh, not here right now, but it's a removable cover for the front vent so you can pull it off and then put this, which came in the box, which is a plate for a GoPro mount. They have plugs for the sides when you take this off. It comes in the box with a clear and smoke visor, both of which pin lock ready and pin lock is included. The last thing to note that I like is that it's got a multi-density EPS liner, which is just, uh, it, it uses different density foams on the inside and the protective layer, you know, to help keep the weight down and put the protection where you need it. So that's the uh, bird's eye view. Let's get into the questions that I found when searching for what people are wanting to know about that specific helmet. The first and most uh, common question that's out there, whether you're searching on Google or, uh, you know, from my folks over at in, uh, Instagram and on the YouTube short that I put, was the weight. Concerning the weight, it is a full carbon fiber helmet, but it is an adventure helmet, so you're going to sacrifice some weight for having, like, peak, and then, of course, I've got this, and then this a Bluetooth communicator and a camera that is usually attached. The weight of this is 3.2 pounds, which is extremely light. Uh, to put that in comparison, the kind of pinnacle of lightweight ADV helmets right now is the Climb Cryos Pro, and I think that is 3.1 pounds. If I'm wrong, I'll put that on the screen. The Arai XD4 is almost half a pound heavier than this helmet. My previous helmet, the Scorpion AT950, it's almost a full pound heavier. So this is extremely light, even in its mode right now. Now, when you remove this peak and put it in Street Fighter mode, you're losing a couple, you know, whatever. Uh, extremely light. Like one of the lightest helmets that I've, I've ever worn. Uh, this one came up a couple of times as well, but specifically CJ Pilot 4226 asked how the uh, strain is on your neck. Um, that kind of relates to the weight. How long can you ride before you feel it and need to rest and recover? How does it handle buffeting? Now, I took this helmet uh, on my trip down to Florida, of which the first video will be linked down in the description. Uh, I took the tiger on sand. Uh, spoiler alert, not my favorite. But it was six and a half hours of uh, 75 south and six and a half hours 
75 North. The weight of it, you don't feel it. You really don't feel it. Even with a GoPro, usually on my previous helmets, on all of them, once I attach that GoPro, like it's over. I got like a couple hours in me and I start noticing that weight. I might be more sensitive to it, but you know, your mileage may literally vary, vary but for me, I could strap the GoPro to the front of that helmet and ride the entire way down there, didn't even feel it. And the buffeting is a weird one because the previous helmet that I wore, the AT950, tens of thousands of miles in that helmet. And I have to say, this one is a little bit worse on buffeting, but it's different. So ADV helmets have one big problem on the road, and that's this guy right here. They will generally catch a lot of wind depending on how they're made. There's two types of, of, of like weirdness on the road, and there's the buffeting and the snatching, what I call the snatching, which is air pocket hits this, whoop, and you can feel it move the helmet very drastically. While I noticed the buffeting a little bit more, buffeting is just that like weird kind of like shaky, you can feel the drag on the helmet. While it was noticeable in this helmet, it wasn't, it was smooth. It's hard to describe. Sometimes the buffeting kind of you know, like, it's very sporadic and you can feel like little snags. This one, it was just a slight drag on the helmet the whole way down. I didn't really notice any snatching unless, you know, I had some huge crosswind come in and hit me from the side. I could head check pretty well, didn't really bother me, and didn't really introduce any fatigue through that whole trip. Surprisingly, the previous helmet, it, it, I guess it's just designed differently uh, as far as the peak is concerned, because I never really noticed it. All right, Vinny Madrox on YouTube asked, how's the wind noise? Specifically asked in street mode compared to other helmets. Uh, I'm gonna talk about street mode, and then, but we're gonna start as a whole, uh, we're gonna talk about the wind noise because it's a carbon fiber helmet. Carbon fiber helmets are louder in general as a rule of thumb than their composite counterparts. A lot of that is just the, the material, it's thinner because it can be because you need less material to receive the same amount of strength or greater than its composite counterparts. Uh, so it's gonna be louder. There's less material blocking the sound coming into the helmet. I will say for a carbon fiber helmet, it's really quiet. But you should be riding with earplugs anyway. Uh, I recommend Loop because that's the ones that I use. Uh, not sponsored or anything, but they're fantastic. There is no difference between the wind noise, uh, between peak on and peak off, or ADV mode or street mode, that I could notice. Uh, 75 all the way down to Florida, I had the peak on. Uh, I made note of the drag, the wind noise, all that stuff. And on the way back, I had the peak off. It did not seem to change. The inside of this helmet, the quick material is nice and thick and plush as a chin curtain. And with that uh, air fit system, you get a nice good seal down here. So most of the wind noise that I, I received was uh, at the temple. And it makes sense because that's where the peak attaches. So that's where wind is going to be most disturbed. So you're going to notice it here at least when it was my experience. But for a carbon fiber helmet, I mean, this thing is real quiet. Seriously, don't ride without earplugs. Just don't. All right, so I got two questions uh, comparing it to the AT950, which was is my was my previous daily. This is now my previous daily. But Andy Uguni and Jay Crozier, one both asked about the 950. Andy asked if it wasn't carbon fiber, how would you compare it to the AT950? Better, it's just better in nearly every way, except for one major way, and we'll get to that. It's more comfortable, feels better, like the everything, the build quality, the detents on the, on the visor, like everything feels better. And a lot of that is because it shares its DNA with their top tier racing helmet, the R1 Air, uh, and that DNA has come just straight over. So it fits and feels just like that helmet, which is what pro level racers are racing in. It's to be expected for this level of helmet, honestly. Jay Crozier One asked specifically, tell me why it's better than my AT950. If it's so much lighter, is it so much lighter that I won't notice a mounted camera as much? Yes, yeah, this is not hyperbole. Um, with the AT950, 
I have the chin mount, the chin mount, chin mount for GoPros. And when I put the GoPro on, after about two, three hours, I start feeling that weight. I start feeling a strain in the back of my neck. The longer it goes, the more fatigued I am. I literally had a camera on the front of that and mounted it when I left here in Georgia and I rode all the way to Florida and I took it off in Florida. I had it on, on the whole time on the interstate, didn't even feel it. Went riding with two wheel ADV uh, out in Tampa in some uh, gnarly sand whole time. Never once had an issue. The other features are, are great as well. Like the air fit system, super awesome. Uh, just the lightness of it is so much better. Okay, buckle up because this one is going to be a little bit contentious. Uh, while searching for helmets, uh, you inevitably look for these stickers on the back. The certifications for the safety ratings. How does this rate? Currently, there's a few safety ratings that you should be looking for on a helmet. That is FIM, Snell, ECE. Uh, this is going to be, I'm, you can get flamed in the, com in the comments or whatever, but out of all of the, they each test their own things. They have their own requirements. They're both, all three of them are independent testing uh, certifications. Uh, I will say this, don't fall into the trap of just hunting for Snell because it is the best. It's not the best, it's just different. It adds more. Every Snell helmet is ECE rated. It just adds a little bit different to the test. Each one has their benefits. Each one has their kind of like shortcomings. I will say though, out of all of them, uh, Sharp, FIM, Snell, DOT, ECE 2206, which is the most recent uh, certification, is technically the most thorough. Doesn't mean that it's the best, but you're guaranteed that if you get a helmet that's 2206, it's going to be well tested. I think they added like 12 more testing parameters to their certification. It's really easy to go like, I can only ride Snell because my favorite rider is only riding Snell and it's the safest that's out there. It's kind of misleading. It, it, the nuances are much more important. This is going to be as good or better than any of the other testing for any of the other certificates. It is a safe helmet. EC 2206 is very stringent and very thorough. This meets or exceeds those uh, protections. The new testing is, and that's uh, an extremely safe helmet. Now, some of the other searches are gonna be a little bit more brand specific. Like people are asking, is Scorpion a good helmet? I am a Scorpion simp. I love their helmets. Uh, they, and only their helmets. I'm not a big fan of their gear. Uh, as far as like gloves and jackets and stuff. But I've owned like four Scorpion helmets. And the thing that I like the most is that they give you a lot for your money. It's $550 for a full carbon ADV helmet. Most other helmets are in the, like the $700 range for this. They, they do this quite often. They give you a helmet that's punching way above its weight class as far as price and the competitors. I love Scorpion helmets. Like I said, this is my fourth one. And if I can help it, and if they keep making awesome helmets, I'm gonna keep buying those awesome helmets. And so those are the questions that I most commonly came across. Uh, I condensed it down into those because out of all of the questions, they pretty much led to those same places. Is it light? Does it strain your neck? Is it quiet? Is it safe? Is it cheap and crappy? What we're gonna do is we're gonna round this out with the things that I really like about it and then some uh, room for improvement that I think could be done on this. Now, super awesome that it comes with both the clear and the dark smoke and their pin lock ready and the pin lock is inside the box. You don't have to buy anything else. That is supremely awesome. We touched on it a couple of times now. The lightweightness is a game changer. I love being able to ride longer without feeling that fatigue because my body is already kicking my ass. I don't need my head doing the same. But the other real cool thing is with, oh my God, I love those detents. With this open, you can fit full size drop frame goggles in here. And the cool thing is, I don't know if this was intended, when I want to, I can put this visor down and the straps will kind of sandwich in between here. But the other thing is I love that this peak is removable and it's very easy to do so. But that leads us into a couple of things that I think need 
improvement on this and sorely. The first of which is, this right here is your thumb screw for removing this peak. You just remove both of them on the other side and this is kind of a half lock twist off kind of thing. Super simple. This is plastic. The threads are metal. So you have to be careful so you don't end up, you know, cranking down on this thing too hard and end up chewing through this plastic. It does look like a glass reinforced like ABS. It's pretty stout, but it's still plastic. If you're like me though, and you leave it in one or the other for long periods of time, just be careful with it. Like I said, just a half twist, this comes off. Super simple, half twist, back on. I would love to see metal here and metal here. A lightweight, like aluminum at least, just so that you're not plastic on metal threads. The other thing that I think needs a lot of improvement is this mechanism for changing out the shield. You guys may or may not be able to see it. There's like an arrow on there, right there. You line those arrows up and then you just yank the living crap out of this thing and it comes off and it feels like you're gonna break it every time, which wouldn't be a problem because I would just throw the clear shield on. The only reason this is on the dark smoke is because there's no internal sun visor. And I know a lot of people are gonna be like, so what? The Euro version has a drop down sun shield and that would make this my Goldilocks. I would take the extra few ounces for the mechanism. They did it right on the Euro version too because the mechanism is up here, not down here. So you can still put your comms unit. I would really, I don't understand why they did not bring the drop down sun shield on the, the Western version. Big miss in my personal opinion. Most people don't care, but for me, that's my Goldilocks. Lightweight, looks cool, drop down sun, all these, all this stuff. Uh, and the last thing that I think is, uh, it's gonna be a very unique use, use case. The GoPro mount that comes with it in the box, you just pull the vent cover off and it's really easy. And then you have this plate. This plate attaches where that vent cover is, except it doesn't snap in. So you have to screw it in. It is just the plate. This is separate. This is just a standard GoPro mount with a sticky back. You want to take a guess at what the problem is? Just put it down in the comments before I get to it. Where the shit is the screw? Oh, it's underneath here. So if you want to put this thing back into regular mode with the vent cover, say in cold weather, you have to unsticky this mount, take the adhesive off, get to the screw, unscrew it, put it back. It's just a pain in the ass. If you take it off, you have to put another one of these on. You have to do that every time you want to take that off. That is fundamentally wrong. That is made by somebody who's like, oh, yeah, we could do this and doesn't really ever use these things. What this should be, honestly, is a mount with a cutout for the screw and these, the actual GoPro mount, built into it. So you don't have to keep using and then you can just off and on as you need, boom. And I'm probably gonna make one of those. And if I do, I might just make this free for everybody to download so you can like 3D print it or something like that. We'll see what happens. But that's it. Those are the things that I would change. Uh, everything else I really love about this helmet, it is almost perfect. This size large, so it's a little loose, uh, looser than I would I like it. I still have nice tight uh, around the cheek, but I would like it a little bit more snug. The air fit system helps out with that by kind of snugging these cheeks up. Let's see if you can hear it. Yeah. But that's it. That's the Scorpion XT 9000. I'll leave links for everything that I talked about down in the description. Now do it. Tell me if you like these kind of reviews where it's more about what you're searching for and answering your questions and less me prattling on about all the things I like about it. Anyway, be safe, be kind, and we'll see you next time. My dog has been literally just the best boy hanging out there not making a noise this entire review.